Hello everyone, it's your Big Mutt here, and welcome back to Top 7 Hardest Crash End Scene Trilogy Levels. Uh, we did Crash 1, we did Crash 2, and now, this week, we're gonna be doing Crash 3. I can't wait. Now, before I start, my opinions on Crash 3 is that, um, it's actually not my favorite Crash game. In fact, I would actually kind of prefer 1 over 3, in my opinion. I don't hate 3, it's just not my favorite. I prefer uh, Crash 2 and 1 over Crash 3, just because I thought Crash 3 was just, nah, not my type of Crash games in my opinion. But, it doesn't mean I don't like this game. And, I, I probably didn't like this game as much, probably just because of how easy this game is. This game is actually pretty easy. And now, when I say hardest Crash 3 levels, I don't really... I, they're not really that hard. They're just kind of gimmicky to the which makes them hard um, Which so when I say that they're hard, I don't really think they're hard I just think they're kind of they're nothing compared to crash one and crash two uh, Crash crash one was the hardest crash two was medium and crash three is probably the easiest uh, but that doesn't mean that Crash 3 is terrible, and that doesn't mean that, because there is some pretty challenging Crash 3 levels. I just thought they weren't as hard as the Crash 1 and Crash 2 levels, but they can still be pretty challenging at times. So, I can't wait to start this top 7 list for Crash 3 levels, so, and I can't wait because it's going to be really exciting. So yeah, anyways, on to number 7. And at the number 7 spot, I have... Tomb Raider. Now, what makes this level pretty challenging is that, uh, basically what happens is that the water can get so obnoxious in this level. Now, what it does is, it'll either sink or lower, so, or lure, um, and what it's really hard because if you are in the water while it's, uh, you know, uh, you know, growing like when the water is like really filled up then crash can drown so you have to be extra careful to uh walk walk on the um you know walk on the platforms that are surrounded in the water and that's not uh, easy either and another thing that makes this level challenging is because of the enemy now there's now there's these weird gun like enemies that will like shoot really fast out like to the other side of the wall and you know you have to run now what really helps avoiding these enemies is that you have to spin jump i mean well not spin jump uh slide jump uh but even that can be challenging because sometimes i don't land that jump accurately uh and i sometimes i just fall off the edge which is, can be pretty challenging um what helped me with this level was just using all those abilities in this game, because there's a lot of abilities in this game that really make, is what really makes this game pretty easy. And, you know, that's what really helped me with the majority of these levels, is because of the abilities that only Crash 3 has. And that's what really helped me with this level. Um, so I wouldn't say Tomb Raider was that hard, it just was a little bit challenging at times, but I still managed to make it across pretty fair and simple so i think i did a really good job at this level even though it could be challenging at times so that was a great relief uh so yeah tomb raider was pretty challenging but not the challenging but like not the most challenging so yeah that was pretty good um anyways on to number six and at the number six spot we have mad bombers now I hate these levels where, you know, it takes place in World War One and you have to shoot those blimps. I don't like that. I don't like those levels. They were pretty challenging. Um, now, the concept of a level is actually pretty simple, you know. You just gotta shoot ten blimps. They're pretty easy. But what makes this level pretty challenging is because you have to avoid those, uh, the enemies that will shoot down on your, uh, guy. Well, your, your little, you know, gun shooter, and it really sucks, because if you get hit, you, if you get hit a number of times, which is gonna happen a lot, you know, you will, you will greatly, uh, decrease in health, you know, you will lose a lot 
of damage, and, you know, you will die. And that was really, uh, struggling. However, I was lucky when I did this level, um, and I thankfully made it across. It was, what really helped me was just to, you know, not think about, you know, the enemies getting me. And I tried to stay as far away as I could from the enemies, and I just kept spamming that gun button. That's another thing that really helped me. So, yeah, I, it, that's what really helped me with this level. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Mad Bombers definitely deserves to be at number six. Definitely. Anyways, on to number five. And at the number five spot, we have Rings of Power. Basically, what I said for Mad Bombers applies to Rings of Power as well. Except I thought the enemies were more annoying in this level. And, you know, you it was, it was, it was just overall a bit more challenging. Um... I really don't have much to say about Rings of Power. Like with Mad Bombers, what really helped me was spamming that fire button. You know, the gun shooting button. Because, you know, otherwise I would have been doing terrible at this level. But, you know, Rings of Power wasn't that hard like the other ones I just said. It just takes a little bit of practice to get used to the controls. But once you get down the, you know, the level, then it actually starts to become pretty easy. Um, so with Mad Bombers and Rings of Power, I just got used to the controls, and that's what really helped me with that level. So yeah, that that's a really huge plus for me. Um, so yeah, Rings of Power, Rings of Power definitely deserves number five. Um, anyways, on to number four, and at the number four spot, I have Orange Asphalt. Now. What makes this level pretty challenging is because it's really hard to get in first place. For the, for the majority of the time, the only way you can get in the first place is not to make a single mess up. If you mess up just once, you're, you're, you're just done. You're not going to be able to catch up. There's no way. You have to be perfect in this level in order to get first place. And it's one of those racing levels where you drive on the motorcycle and you have to race to the finish. It was pretty challenging, and, you know, I kept losing, you know, I wasn't really doing that good. And what really helped me was just try to be a perfectionist, which was not the easiest thing in the world, because, you know, um, and, and on top of that, getting all the crates and being perfect at the same time, that's not really that good. <laughs> it's really challenging, and um, I will say that this level, this is actually the start of the pretty hard levels from Orange Asphalt. Orange Asphalt was not really uh, an easy level for the most part, um, but, you know, what makes this level actually easy though is that there is actually no way to die. If you keep, if anything, you actually gain lives from doing this level or any of these levels that involve racing because you can get a lot of crates from doing this and you don't lose a life, so you can just keep doing that level and, you know, a lot of times and you can like get 99 lives which would probably be an easy way to get 99 lives in this game but you know if you're trying to like do this level uh with just completing the box like we're just getting the crates and you know doing the level it's a really challenging level um and that's what really helped me with this level was just trying to complete it it was definitely not an easy thing to do so yeah i'm so yeah definitely number four orange asphalt Anyways, let's go on to number three. And at the number three spot, we have the jet ski levels. I hate these levels. Um, now, what makes this, these levels uh, challenging is that the 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 jet ski the jet ski controls are the worst controls in the entire game. The jet ski controls are terrible, and they like. It takes a long time to turn on the jet skis, and that's what really, that's the only reason the, this level, or any of these levels, are at number three. It's because the, the the controls for this for these levels are terrible, because it takes a, it takes so freaking long to, you know, turn, it, it just, it's a huge mess, and, you know, there's like spikes at every turn and not on and then on top of that getting the crates in these levels like getting the crates in levels like the orange asphalt is nothing compared to getting the all the crates in the jet ski levels they're they're a whole different story 
Getting all the crates in these levels is is atrocious. They're hard. And and th that's one of the hardest parts of Crash 3 is getting the crates in these levels. Because the controls are terrible for one, and second of all, it's hard to aim at the right spot to get the crates. It's really hard to do that, and you know it's just a huge mess. And I'm ho and I hope that um, I hope that when you know when I don't know, but I just hope that if like if they ever like make a patch for like Crash and Scene Trilogy, I hope they just like redo the controls for the jet ski level. Although that would never happen because, you know, they like to stay true to the original versions, but that would actually be pretty cool, and that would actually make, it would actually really make me like these levels more. <laughs> but yeah, definitely number three, the jet ski levels. Um, so yeah, anyways, let's go on to number two. And at the number two spot, we have Gone Tomorrow. Now, I really don't like the future levels. They're a really cool concept, but... The future levels can actually be pretty difficult. They're probably the only real difficult levels in Crash 3. Although I wouldn't say they're anywhere near to Crash 1 standards. And they're not really that much of Crash 2 standards. But Crash, but the Crash 3 uh, future levels are pretty challenging. I will say that. Um, Gone Tomorrow, um, there's a lot of annoying enemies in this level. Especially those enemies that will block the way. Now... What I did when I played Crash 3 was I never used the bazooka, uh, the bazooka gun. And I didn't really like that item that much, so that's why I didn't really use it. So getting over those enemies that blocked the way were actually pretty challenging. But what I did was slide kick to the other side so I could skip them. And it, it worked for the most part. But it was still annoying to get past those enemies. I didn't really like the fruit bazooka. So yeah, that's why I, um didn't do that for that level but gone tomorrow is you know it's not really that good of a level in my opinion you know there's a lot of annoying enemies hard jumps to make you know what really helped me was just you know again like with all the levels on this uh list was using the abilities that crash 3 has uh which is uh definitely one of the best features for uh this type of game because you know you really need those abilities, or else you're not going to do good at these levels at all. Uh, so yeah, uh, definitely number two, Gone Tomorrow. Now on to number one. And at the number one spot, we have Future Tense. Now what's interesting about this level is that this level is exclusive to Crash and Scene Trilogy, and was not actually in the original game. Um, So this is actually new to Crash and Scene Trilogy, but... It's bundled with Crash 3, so it's technically considered a Crash 3 level. And besides, I'm talking about the levels from Crash and Scene Trilogy. I'm not talking about the original. If I was talking about the original, I would have said Gone Tomorrow being the hardest. But if we're talking about End Scene Trilogy, then there's one other level that definitely takes the top spot, and that is Future Tense. Now, I... I actually thought this level was actually pretty cool. You know, I actually really did like this level. However, there was a huge mix of, you know, there was a huge mix of, you know, hard jumps to make, annoying enemies, uh, very annoying, you know, death spot. You know, it was a really huge mess to go through. Um, and it was pretty challenging to go through. And I'll even say that uh, this level could actually be... Uh, up to standards with a lot of Crash 2 levels. Not Crash 1 levels, they're a whole different story, but Crash 2 levels are a huge, you know, are kind of similar in the difficulty department with this level. Future Tense is, you know, was a pretty challenging level, and it definitely deserves to be the hardest level in Crash 1. I mean, in Crash 3, whoops. But, um, what now... What was actually pretty relieving playing this level was because this was the last level I had to play in the entire game when I was truly finished playing the entire trilogy. After this level, I was complete. I completed the trilogy and I was relieved. And thank God for that because this was a huge... This was very hard to go through. But Future Tense was pretty challenging. 
but it was definitely not one of the hardest Crash Bandicoot levels I've ever played. It definitely was pretty challenging, but not as challenging as other, um, you know, levels I've played. But this level was challenging, and, you know, I'm glad I went through it because it was pretty challenging, nonetheless. Even though it wasn't that hard if you compare it to Crash 1 and Crash 2. I know I compare this game to those games. I'm sorry. It's just, I just have to with this type of video. So, yeah. Anyways, uh, what is your opinion on the hardest Crash 3 levels? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'd love to hear it. Anyways, uh... This has been Enigma, and peace. See you next time.